Hi, how are you? So we're uh, starting our new unit on derivatives. That's so the first of the actual calculus that we'll be doing. And we're going to start out with the definition of the derivative. Okay, so uh, I'm going to look at the screen, so don't think I'm ignoring you when I uh, when you see the side, when you see my profile. It's my good side. And we're going to try to get through this. been interrupted several times already, so we're hoping that uh, we get a good solid three and a half minutes to work through this. So we're going to start with what's called the definition of the derivative. And the definition of the derivative, well, in order to, it helps us to find answers to questions like finding the slope of this function right here when x is equal to 1. Okay, so we want to find the slope. What we're going to do is we're going to use the slope of a secant line, and the secant line is just a line that intersects a function in more than one place, to find an approximate slope. So if I were to do that, get a little more formal, we're going to think about what slope means. Okay, slope is typically the ratio of the rise to the run. Okay, so as I look at from this starting point to that point, my rise is here, my run is there. So the chains that I have along the x-axis, we're just going to call it delta x. That's my run is. My rise, if I'm already at the f of x down here, then the next point is the f of x plus delta x up here. So the rise is just the difference between these two quantities right here. How far apart are they? They're f of x plus delta x minus the f of x. So my rise is the f of x plus delta x minus the f of x, and my run is just delta x. So maybe it looks familiar from some of the things we've worked on before. So again, that's going to give me an approximate slope. It's not going to be the exact slope right at this particular point. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep making delta x smaller and smaller. So as I make delta x smaller, okay, suddenly my slope has changed a little bit. The delta x is smaller. The difference between the f of x and uh, f of x plus delta x and the f of x is also smaller. So I'm getting perhaps closer. I'm going to keep going with that same theory. Okay, a little closer still, and these things keep getting smaller and smaller as we go. All right. So generally speaking, as delta x gets smaller and smaller, the secant st line starts to look like what we might imagine a tangent line to look like. Yeah, the fact that this is touching here and here, there's just a little bit of gap. You know, we're not very far off the mark. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to take the limit as delta x approaches zero. So we want to take the limit of the secant line because we can't just say, oh, well, delta x is zero. We know what's, where that's going to lead us. If this is zero, we're going to end up with zero over zero, which means we have more work to do. So. For the derivative, to find the actual slope of the tangent line, we're going to just use limits. We're going to find the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the f of x plus delta x minus the f of x all over delta x. Okay, that's what the, that's, uh, the definition of the derivative. Definition of the... Uh, I'll leave myself enough room, but we'll go with it. Okay, The definition of the derivative. There it is. So, I think we're going to try one. So we're going to find the, slope, find the slope of the tangent line to the f of x, which is equal to 3x plus 4, using the definition of the derivative. Okay? So if we do this, the f of x plus delta x means we just take x plus delta x, and we put it right there where x used to be. So we're going to write this, the limit as delta x approaches 0. Instead of the f of x plus delta x, I'm going to write 3x plus delta x plus 4 plus 4 minus the f of x, and I tend to put the actual function in parentheses, just so I don't have any sign errors, all over delta x. So as I go through there, I'm going to do the arithmetic and the algebra, 3x plus 3 delta x plus 4 minus 3x minus 4, all of that's over delta x. Go a little long, lower on the page. Uh, what you hopefully may have noticed is that uh, this 3x and that 3x neutralize each other, as do this 4 and that 4. So we're just left with 3 delta x divided by delta x. Cancel those out, and so I'm left with 3. So the slope of the tangent line to 3x plus 4 is 3. Okay. If I had just asked you what the slope of 3x plus 4 is, what would you have said? Yeah, you would have said 3. So, the fact that we went through this process with the definition of the derivative and got the answer that we would expect to get, it's just a way to check to make sure that, that what we're doing actually makes any kind of sense and gives us answers that we would expect to have. Okay. Um, 
So the slope of the tangent line is also known as the derivative. The slope of the tangent line is also known as the derivative. F primed of x, that's how we, uh, that's how we say it, and that's what it's, how we write it, F primed, uh, is another way to write the derivative, it's shorthand. It's the limit as delta x approaches zero of the f of x plus delta x minus the f of x all over delta x. Other notation that we use, we use dy dx fairly, re fairly regularly. Uh, the derivative of y with respect to x, that's how, how we would pronounce that. It looks an awful lot like delta y over delta x, but we've gotten to that point where delta x is zero, so we change the notation. We might write it as y primed, and we also sometimes write the derivative of the function itself. Dy, d of dx of some particular function. So they all are talking about the slope of the tangent line. They're all the derivative. It's all the definition of the derivative. Um, okay, and we also use slope of the tangent line, derivative, and instantaneous rate of change interchangeably. So anytime you hear any of those three phrases, we mean the same thing. We mean we're finding the derivative, mean we're finding the slope of the tangent line, which means we're finding the limit as delta x approaches zero of the f of x plus delta x minus the f of x all over delta x. That's what it means. Okay? So, oh, that's into part two. So you got that to look forward to. We're going to use that process that we just did with x cubed and 2x. It's going to be Pascal's triangle. It's going to be nuts. But we're going to be able to get through it and uh, hopefully make some sense of it as we go. So that's the introduction to derivatives. That's the definition of derivatives part one for your viewing pleasure. And uh, hopefully you learned something. If you have some questions, well, you just let me know. And we will talk to you real soon. And I will pause this little device. I'll stop it even. See you later.